Um, hello everyone, my name is Essie Monday. I am a full stack engineer, a developer relations engineer, and a proud of 3 js ambassador. And in this video, I'll be teaching you how to install and use a chaining plugin with the Web3.js library. This video is aimed at Web3.js developers or aspiring developers who want to learn about using Web3.js in their application. And at the end of this video, you would have learned how to access real life data in your application using the chaining plugin with the Web3.js library. And um, to follow along, you need to have some fundamental knowledge of JavaScript and have Node.js installed in your system. Also, to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the ChainSafe YouTube channel and also follow Web3.js across all social media. You can also join the Discord channel to keep up with the latest happening in the Web3.js ecosystem. Before we dive right in, you need to make sure you have Node.js installed in your system. And a good way to check for that is by running Node-V. That shows you the version you have installed in your system. For me, I'm using version 20.14. And next thing we need to do is initialize our application by running npm init-y. What that does is it helps us set up our, our application with the default setting. And if we navigate to our folder, well, okay. <laughs> Our uh, folder, the package.json, all you see is the default chain, name of your application, version, and everything. Oh, and you can also go ahead and add yourself as an author. So my name is S. Monday, so I'll be adding that. <laughs> Next thing we need to do is install the Web3 JS library by running npm install Web3. And you can also use yarn. If you're unsure what commands to run, all you need to do is navigate to the Web3.js documentation, the get inside guide, and if you navigate down here, you see the commands you need to run. So you can also use yarn, it's left to you. Next thing we need to do is install the chain link plugin. And if you navigate to the Web3.js, okay, if you navigate to the Web3.js um, website and go on that plugin, you see the chain link plugin here. If you click, it will navigate you to the NPM registry for that particular plugin. And for this, we'll be using a chaining plugin. So all we need to do is come here, copy this command, and then go back to our terminal to install it. So after installing, we just come here and we pop it in here and we install. We install the chaining plugin. Now, when that is done installing, you should see the chain link plugin here and also the Web3.js library. For this video, we'll be using the version 4.1, which is the latest version of Web3.js as at the time of recording. And then for the plugin, we'll be using version 1, which is, I think, is the first version. So next thing we need to do is create an entry point for our application. We'll be using index.js. And we need to import, I like to comment whenever I'm, <laughs> whenever I'm writing my code. So we need to import the necessary libraries import the necessary library. So first thing we need to do is import Web3. Because um, require Web3. We need to import our chaining plugin. So um, let me just go ahead and require it first so that I make sure I know I'm getting the right word for the plugin, the right name of the plugin. So inquire chain link, yes, or the complete to rescue. <laughs> so require chain link plugin. And one other thing we also need is the main net price feed. This will give us access to a lot of um data we need, like the price feed. If you need um price for Ethereum to USD, to instantiate um an instance of our web three, we need to instantiate web three. So cons web three equals new. Web3. And for this, we'll be needing a provider. And I'll be using my provider from Infura. We'll just go down here. If you don't have an Infura account, all you need to do is sign up, then you create a new application. Then you, you come here, you copy your provider URL. As a point of warning, it's not ideal to show your API key, but for the purpose of this video, I will just be showing it. And afterwards, I'll go and delete it. So 
to follow along, just go ahead, create your Infura, your Infura account, create your application, and then you get your provider URL. Similar to what we did for instantiating Web3, we need to instantiate the Chainlink plugin. And we'll do it similar to the way we did the Web3. Only for this, we will not be needing a provider. So Chainlink plugin, we'll just call it. Next thing we need to do is register our plugin. Uh, autocorrect says add, but it's register your plugin. Register your, your chaining plugin to Web3. How you do it is by Web3 dot register the instance of the plugin you created up here. So chaining plugin. And that is that we have this setup. Next thing we need to do now is get the latest price of Ethereum USD, like my autocorrect says. Autocomplete, sorry. What you need to do for that is you just create an asynchronous function. Asynchronous function, um, I'll, I'll be calling it mm, get its price. Not bad. And I think it just completed it for me, but no, I think it made some mistakes. So get its price. And for this, let's say cons, we'll, we'll be saving it in a constant. Let's call it it's USD. Let's call it price. It calls awaits, then the instance of the chaining plugin that we have up there that's already registered. And the, the function we'll be calling on it is the get price function. And this is where our main end price should comes into play because it gives us access to any cryptocurrency pair we need. If you look here, we have the one for one inch with respect to Ethereum, one inch with respect to USD. But for this demo, we'll be using a it's USD. So this constant comes with a lot of variables. So we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and restructure or all you need to do is just console log um console log Ethereum price is price is then you go ahead and convert it into a string or oh, string then your yeah, Ethereum then you go ahead and slice it to get the value once zero six i think you can also go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and um, impute your dollar sign yes i think that does the trick yes then you go ahead and call your function get it to real price so all we need to do now is inspect our code to make sure there's no error mm -hmm. Make sure there's no error. Inspect. Mm, I don't see any error, so go ahead and run. Run it. Let's see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I think we made a mistake up here. Slide 06. It's returning in 333. I think. Oh, sorry. I put 64. So that gives you the price of Ethereum. And I think at this point, the price of Ethereum is $3,386. I don't know, it might still go up, it might go down, I don't know, it's all just, I'm not, I'm not a DeFi expert. So that is how you get the price of Ethereum with respect to USD in your application. And it's not just applicable in Web3 applications, you can also use it in your Web2 applications. That is the beauty of the Web3.js library. It's, 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 you can use it at any point in your development process. So thank you for watching.